Many decades ago, a famous scientist by the name of Dr. Linus Pauling suggested that vitamin C, the same stuff that's found in citrus berries, peppers, and many more foods, may be a treatment for cancer. Now, the idea was tested a few times back in the 70s and 80s, but found no effect. And the idea lost some of its appeal. But recently, more studies have looked into the effects of vitamin C on cancer, and some fascinating discoveries have been made. Just this year, a big study released reigniting the possibility that there may be some merit to the idea again. So what does vitamin C do to cancer? And why are studies now finding some evidence in favor of vitamin C when previous studies didn't? In this big study that I alluded to, researchers were interested in figuring out if certain types of lung cancer called LKB1 deficient lung cancer was especially prone to dying off when exposed to vitamin C. Now, the reason that they suspected this type of lung cancer could be susceptible is because this deficiency, the uh, enzyme LKB1, leads to cancer cells to produce a lot more reactive oxygen species. These are damaging molecules that stress the cell. So when vitamin C, called ascorbic acid here, was applied to the LKB1 lung cancer cells, there was a significant uptick in the production of these damaging reactive oxygen species, seen with the higher bars, especially the red one on the far right. This indicates that lung cancer missing the LKB1 enzyme experienced more damage when exposed to vitamin C. So then, when we give vitamin C, ascorbic acid, to animals with these lung cancers, do they live longer? Does the cancer actually struggle? The answer is an odd sort of, because we see here tumor size. If the lines go up, that's greater tumor size. Not a good thing. Notice how most of the lines go up similarly, including the ascorbic acid condition. That means that ascorbic acid is ineffective at controlling this cancer. Or is it? There is an instance where ascorbic acid, again, that's vitamin C, does lead to significant effects against cancer. See that red line? It's certainly separated from the pack. That condition is a combination of an immunotherapy and ascorbic acid. Not only that, survival was also enhanced in this combination. Now, beyond that, when vitamin C and immunotherapy combination are injected directly into the lung, directly at the site of the tumor, tumor growth is almost completely halted. So this means that ascorbic acid is effective in combating these LKB1 deficient lung cancers when paired with anti-cancer therapies like immunotherapies. So now that we know ascorbic acid can have anti-cancerous effects, why did it get dismissed in the past? And what new clinical evidence exists now that would change that narrative? The answer is actually a mixture of what we already went over and what previous research didn't do. Like I mentioned, in the late 70s and 80s, human trials did assess efficacy of ascorbic acid, but none of them showed effectiveness against cancer. And even now, the year of this recording, there's been trials indicating no effectiveness. So then why or why are we talking about it right now? There's actually two reasons. One, there's considerable uncertainty in the ineffectiveness of vitamin C. And two, there's signals that it actually may work. So I'm calling this uncertainty in no effect, because while several trials have tried and failed to show an effect of vitamin C, the reality is that there are two problems with the studies that show ineffectiveness. One, early studies did not use vitamin C in conjunction with regular cancer therapies, and they even relied on oral vitamin C as opposed to intravenous. And as we saw from the study showing vitamin C stresses certain lung cancers, when applying this in an animal model of cancer, the effectiveness was really only present when a combination treatment was used. Two, even the more recent uh, trials that do include sanctioned cancer therapies and use intravenous vitamin C acknowledge that there are several variables to consider, like ascorbic acid, vitamin C dosing, frequency, amount, duration, and more. Plus, most of these studies are safety trials, so they're not designed to answer the question of does vitamin C help fight cancer directly? The takeaway here is that 
there's many gaps in the evidence that need to be filled before we can officially shut the door on vitamin C. So therein lies the uncertainty. There's plenty of room for something to emerge. And in fact, something is already beginning to emerge, which leads us to my second point, the signals that something might be there. Now, before I dive into that, in this initial study that we went over, there's more to be said on exactly how vitamin C kills cancer cells. In fact, it's a lot like the story of the Trojan horse of Troy, and it unravels into an unpleasant and especially remarkable way that cancer cells die, which leads to a unique long-term immunity. If you're interested in learning all those intricacies, you can find that out in the Physionic Insider membership, which includes extended full versions of all my work, accompanying articles, podcasts, live sessions, and more. It can also be delivered to your email for your convenience, but you'd be missing out on the great community that we've built together. Now, the choice is yours. Anyway, more science, more takeaways, full access to everything as an insider. The link to join is in the description box. In this study, which was put together for people with colorectal cancer that could not be removed surgically, they randomly placed one group on a standard anti-cancer treatment, and the other group, the intervention group, was given the exact same therapy, but in addition was supplied with intravenous vitamin C. Then, over several years, the researchers assessed cancer progression. They determined that vitamin C was ineffective. Ha! <laughs> I bet you didn't expect that, did you? But it isn't more of the same because this is actually an expected outcome, knowing what we now know. Remember, I mentioned that the answer is in what we went over earlier. Vitamin C was only effective in certain cancers. In that study, vitamin C was effective against LKB1 deficient cancer cells, but was not effective even in, co in the combination with the immunotherapy for LKB1 sufficient cancer cells. That means that there's some defining feature that needs to be present for vitamin C to have an effect against cancer. So returning to the clinical trial, when breaking up the total group of people with colorectal cancer based on a specific feature called a RAS mutation, a different story emerges. Here we're looking at progression-free survival. So the higher up the lines remain, the better. The horizontal axis is time, so over many months. And if these people had a tumor growth, death, or anything else that would dip the line down, as they would no longer be progression-free. The red line is the vitamin C condition. The blue is those that were not given high-dose vitamin C. So, yes, here we see that vitamin C is actually effective in humans, but it doesn't end there. The treatment protocol for vitamin C was only 12 cycles, which is about five and a half months. So if I put the graph back up, that means that the vitamin C aspect of the treatment was stopped very early in the data collection. Could the effect be stronger, more protective, if it had lasted several years or the entire time? We don't know, but what we do know is that vitamin C can be effective. The takeaway here is that vitamin C seems ineffective when looking at cancers across the board, but when focusing on specific cancers, there is some evidence that vitamin C is effective in combating cancer. So where does that leave us? How should we be thinking about all this information together? Well, for one, we know that vitamin C stresses and kills certain cancer cells through increased production of these damaging molecules within the cancer cells. Two, intravenous vitamin C seems up to now to only be clinically effective if it's in conjunction, conjunction with standard cancer therapies. Three, not all cancers respond to vitamin C. It matters which type. As for the types that we just identified as being affected, so RAS, colorectal cancers, and LKB1 deficient lung cancers are prime suspects, but there certainly might be more. Four, because of all the three previous points, we need much more research to tease out these details. Luckily, there is something that you can pair with vitamin C that indicates a potent combination effect. And guess what? It isn't a drug or a pharmaceutical therapy. It's a simple nutrition protocol. I detail everything right here. Thanks for tuning in. I hope this was as fascinating for you as it was for me. Dr. Pauling may have been onto something. It just needed some refinement. I'll see you in the next one.